Okay, as I mentioned, Metro Connect, uh, our purpose here is to engage Metro employees to bring us together across departments and divisions and to really highlight the exciting work that uh, Metro is doing, that our city is doing in terms of innovative and sustainable projects across departments. So we're so excited again to bring this program to you once again this year. Um, people entering the waiting room. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Just a few, a reminder, a few tips. Video, if you can use it, do. Mute yourself when not speaking. Participate via chat and speaking uh, later. And then if you do have technical difficulties, there is Laurel's number again. Please note also, this event is being recorded so that our Metro colleagues who couldn't join us here today right now can join us at a later date. Okay, so um, Warner Parks Nature Center. And I think, oh good, Laurel's letting folks in. Okay, so Warner Parks Nature Center um, is, a, is where we're gonna be going today virtually. And the Nature Center is really a jumping off point for exploring the over 3000 acres of Nashville's Birch Reserve, Percy and Edwin Warner Parks. Um, it's a natural history and education reference for both groups and individuals and a resource for organic gardening and native plant landscaping. And we're going to see all of these things in the course of our tour today. And our guide who will be taking us there. There she is, Vera Roberts. She is the manager of the Warner Parks Nature Center. Um, Warner Parks Nature Center is part of the Metro Nashville Parks Department. Vera holds a Master's of Science in Natural Resources and Environmental Education. She has more than 20 years experience with Warner Parks Nature Center, most of that leading, leading the center. And um, one of the things that motivates Vera and that she's very passionate about is to connect people of all ages with the natural world, especially through direct experiences outside. So Good morning, welcome to Warner Park Nature Center. My name is Vera Roberts and I am the manager of Warner Park Nature Center. We are so glad to welcome you here for our virtual tour this morning. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Warner Park Nature Center is the gateway to the Warner Parks. Warner Parks are Metro Park's largest natural area park. We have over 3,100 acres here, and um, we are part of Metro Parks of Nashville. So if you're familiar with Shelby Park or Centennial Park or the Sportsplex or even Wave Country, all of those are Metro Parks facilities, community centers, golf courses. And Warner Parks is my home, our home base. And if you haven't been here, we encourage you to come out. Um, we are going to start by going into the museum and doing just a little walkthrough of our museum. And then I will share with you some more information about what we do here at Warner Park Nature Center. So come on in. exhibits that focus on the natural history and cultural history of Warner Parks. Let's do a walkthrough and you can see some of our exhibits. our butterfly and hummingbird garden. Here at the nature
Nature Center, our mission is three things, um, to provide high quality environmental education, to provide the public with responsible outdoor recreation activities, and to steward the natural resources of the Warner Parks. So one of the ways we do that is with demonstration, native landscaping, sort of modeling best practices for what residents can do at home. This uh, bed behind me is our hummingbird butterfly garden and we're approaching late fall so some of our native plants have gone to seed but we plant things here that attract uh, native pollinators also um, native butterflies who feed on some of the host plants in their larval stages and then um, also feed on the nectar as the flowers um, develop as the the larvae develop into butterflies or moths um, and we plant some annuals too so this is one of our favorites it's called mexican sunflower it's an annual we plant every year and it is a big attractor of lots of butterflies. We also have the native um, brown-eyed Susans and they have been blooming, I think, since late July. So some of the things here that, that we demonstrate that you could plant at home are things that don't need a lot of water that will bloom for a long time and come back year after year after year. Um, so low maintenance, good for native wildlife, and of course, everything we do here on our landscaping is 100% organic. We don't use any insecticides or pesticides. We're gonna head to the pond now. You can see when you visit the Nature Center, you can also have an impromptu meal, pack a picnic, and way down in the field is our nature play area. If you have young children, you can bring them for um, a time to dig in the dirt or explore um, unstructured outdoor play. We're taking the secret route to the pond. When you visit, you can come to the Learning Center and check out an exploration kit. An exploration kit includes a collecting jar, some collecting nets, magnifying glasses, and a pond critter identification sheet, and of course, a collecting tray. This is free of charge, and we change these seasonally. So right now, a pond exploration kit is something that we're featuring, but it might be a garden exploration kit or fall seeds at a different point in the year. Like I said before, part of our mission is environmental education, and we do a lot of educational programming here at the Nature Center. We serve over 60,000 people annually, and a lot of that is through um, educational field trips for Metro students, um, pre-K through high school and some university partners. We also do a lot of public programming. So this week is fall break and we have a lot of impromptu programming going on about birds. It's fall migration happening right now. And then we also release a seasonal program schedule, which can be found on our website, which is um, wpnc.nashville.gov, really easy to remember. Right now we're doing some virtual Zoom programming for adults and we're also doing some in-person hikes and family explor exploration programs. So there are, are a lot of things to do at the Nature Center.
we're going to continue now and go over to our bird banding station where our banders happen to be um, in the process of doing bird research. So at these picnic tables, we have um, some of our volunteers conducting fall migration bird banding research. This program has been going on at the Nature Center for over 30 years. We do have a federal permit to ban birds, and all of our researchers have federal bird banding permits. We conduct 16 different research projects annually, and um, are the second site in the state of Tennessee to have a MODIS receiver station, which means we're now putting radio transmitter backpacks on birds. I want to show you what one of those look like. So these tiny harnesses are going to be put on birds, and these birds, Swainson's thrushes, great cheek thrushes, maybe even a wood thrush, will go south to Central and South America for the winter, and hopefully we will track them through our radio transmitter station and be able to find out where they go, how long they're there, and um, if they'll be back here next spring, and then where they go to nest as far as into northern Canada. So our newest research project that we're really excited about, our bird program is supported by over 50 regular volunteers, and our staff members are 100% um, supported by Friends of Warner Parks. So this is the perfect example of the public-private partnership we have at Warner Parks and Warner Park Nature Center which makes it a little bit um, unique to um, some of Metro government, but we're really fortunate to have Friends of Warner Parks and extremely fortunate to have the expert researchers here in the bird research program. I'm just gonna do a little pan of this over here. There's a lot of information on our website about the bird program. If you want to learn more about it, you can check it out on either the Nature Center website or Friends of Warner Parks website, which is warnerparks.org. We're now going to go over to our trailhead and learn a little bit more about the park. Like I said before, the Nature Center is the gateway to the Warner Parks, our 3,100 acres. We have over 16 and a half miles of primitive hiking trails and over 20 miles of paved pedestrian greenway type trails in the park. So it's a beloved place for hikers and runners and nature enthusiasts to come. If you come here to the Nature Center, you can come to the kiosk if we're not open and grab a trail map. that will help guide your experience in the park. They are available right here at our kiosk. And we do have trailheads at all of the other um, entrances to the Warner Parks. This is a large natural area park. And so part of our duty here is not only to provide recreation, hiking trails, we have two golf courses, picnic areas, things for people, but we also protect all of the animals and plants and natural resources and historic resources of the park. Warner Parks is on the National Register of Historic Places, and we also have um, the Hill Forest and the Birch Reserve, which are on the state, um, their state registered natural areas. So we do take our stewardship of the natural resources as seriously as taking care of all the people who visit the park every day. I hope you will come enjoy the park if you've never been here before and explore some of our 16 miles of hiking trails. We're gonna end in the organic garden so we're just gonna go this way. We're walking through our newest landscaping area, which is our bird garden. The library building that you see in the distance was renovated over the last year and is now home to not only our library, but our bird research program headquarters. And this 
native landscaping is the bird garden, which accompanied the renovation, all supported by private donations made through Friends of Warner Parks. into the garden. So I hope you've enjoyed this little tour of Warner Park Nature Center. There's a lot more to see and do um, than I was able to show you in this virtual tour. So I hope you will come on site to experience it, it firsthand sometime. The park is open seven days a week, sunrise until 11 p.m. Nature Center is open Tuesday through Saturday. And that really just means the Learning Center. The Nature Center is always open to the public and you can come here and explore anytime. A Nature Center is more than just a building. It's a place, here it's a whole campus, but it's a place where people can connect with nature and the outdoors. And we try to provide the perfect venue and opportunity for people of all ages to do that. Thanks so much. All right. Well, thank you so much, Vera, for being our tour guide today. What a great experience over at Warner Parks. I'm Laurel with General Services, and now it's our time for Q&A. I do see that we had a few questions pop up in the chat, um, so you can do that, or we, we do welcome you to verbally ask your questions, so we invite you to simply unmute your mic and then introduce yourself in the department you're with and ask your question, then mute your mic back and Vera will answer. And uh, so I'll go ahead and kick it off. Does anybody have some questions they'd like to ask our expert Vera? Yeah, is there a way, is there a road through the park? Can you drive through it? Say you can't walk or you have mobility issues. Uh, so I'm there Jenny with are... the library, by the way, sorry. Hi, Jenny. Um, so the answer to that is there are a couple of places you can drive through the park. Um, Percy Warner Park traditionally had, I think about 20 miles of um, closed roads and over the last 10 years, we've we've made more of those pedestrian and cyclist only, but there is a loop um, if you go in the Chickering Road entrance that you can do a scenic loop. And also at the Percy Warner Golf Course, we have the option for folks to check out a golf cart. So if you have trouble walking, um, you can get a golf cart free of charge to go up on the road in Percy Warner Park. And we're also right now, um, just through Thanksgiving, offering some guided cart tours of the Alley, which are the stone steps. They were just restored um, thanks to Friends of Warner Parks, huge uh, historic restoration project. And we're doing Alley cart tours um, by reservation on Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays. And there's information on um, the Nashville.gov, uh, our website about that. Can you um, can you talk a little bit more about the bird tracking program that was um, was mentioned sure. in the video? So we um, we have a bird. It's called the Bird Program, and Bird is an acronym that stands for Bird Information Research and Data, and um, it is a nationally recognized, <clears throat> federally permitted bird research program. We have a full time bird research coordinator, Laura Cook, and then a part time um, bird research person, Sandy Bibbins, who's a retired superintendent of nature centers for Metro Parks. And um, we've been doing bird research here. Bird research has actually been going on in Warner Parks for over a hundred years. But um, our bird program, we do year round bird banding, which you have to have a federal permit to do. And then we do a lot of other um, inventorying throughout the year, 16 different research projects. And the project that I was talking about in the video is our newest project, which is called MODIS. And um, if you go to the, I think it's modus.com is the website, it's M-O-T-U-S. Um, if Jennifer, if you guys could put that in the chat. Um, it's a North American 
bird wildlife research program. It's very cool. And we are the second um, site in Tennessee to have a receiver station. So it's basically like a big antenna that picks up these radio transmitters that we're applying to thrushes for our study, but they also do it for bats. The Nature Conservancy has a tower at Chestnut Mountains and they're doing that research. Um, and so we hope to expand this program as it grows. We got grant funding to put up our first tower and start the program. And this fall, we so far have put radio transmitter backpacks on 21 thrushes. And we can actually go on the website and see where our birds are, as long as there's a modus tower that picks up the, a receiver station that picks up the birds. And we're hoping that they will come back here in the, in the spring. So we'll be able to track, you know, how, how long they stay, where they go to nest, if they go to Canada, and just get a lot more uh, valuable information about um, thrushes in particular, but neotropical migratory birds um, helping conserve habitat and conserve bird populations. It was a long answer, sorry. Vera, there was a question that popped up in the chat. Are bicycles allowed on the walking, jogging trails? So that's a great question. And the answer is, is no. Uh, we have a lot of paved pedestrian trails and greenways throughout the park. So those are open for cyclists. And then of course, we have um, nine miles of mountain bike trails, but they are not multi-use um, trails for the primitive uh, biking trails. I have a question. Uh, Susan Gully from the Health Department and Oral Health Services. Years ago, there was a, uh, when the roads, before they put a lot of the blockage where you could drive through it, there was an overlook that you could see. It was just a fabulous overlook. Can you hike to that? And does that have a particular name? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes. Uh, so that's called Luke Lee Summit or Luke Lee Heights. After Colonel Luke Lee, who donated the first piece of land uh, that became Percy Warner Park. Um, in 1927. And um, you cannot drive there anymore, but you can hike there off of the White Trail, the Warner Woods Trail. And you can also um, get a golf cart to take up to Lukely Summit. Okay. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Well, Vera, I'll, I'll, ha I'll ask another question. Um, so obviously with the pandemic, I'm sure that Warner Parks has gotten a lot more usage uh, and visitors to the trails. How, and, and with your concentration on preservation and conservation, how are you all mitigating the impact of the additional use on your, your trails in the Nature Center? So Laurel, thank you for your question. You're right, we have seen um, an uptick in use really starting in April. More, the, Park is busier than I have ever seen it. And it's good because this is a place where people can go for some respite and some mental health uh, time and just to get outside during the pandemic. Um, we are just trying to remind folks about best practices when they come to the park because there are so many people. So um, packing your trash out when you leave, um, staying on the trail, not making side trails. And we encourage folks to um, of course, social distance. And even though you're outside, because there are so many people, we do ask you to have a mask and mask up whenever you're passing folks on the trail, whenever you're using the restrooms, um, you know, just remembering all of those protocols when you're in the park. And I mean, the main thing we do is we're just trying to be out in the park, our staff, friends of Warner Park staff and our volunteers, and um, just reminding people that we want to take care of um, what's here so that everybody can enjoy it for a long time. There's another question I see, are there any holiday events planned? Um, right now at the Nature Center, we do have, we, our, our winter program calendar just was put on our website this morning and we will have programs on um, the events calendar that you can check out. They're all free. Well, actually they're not all free this winter. We're doing, um, we started our hill forest hike. So the hill forest is an old growth forest that is um, closed to the public and we only take folks there on guided tours and it's a pretty special place. So we're starting our hill forest hikes and then we have 
sort of a winter solstice week of activities, um, some for families, and then we're doing a series of wreath making workshops as well. Um, so you can check out all the details about that on our schedule on our website. Um, there's another question. Of, go ahead. Yeah, I got a question. Uh, what about some of the historical features of the park? I, I ride the bikes out there a lot, and I notice there's a lot of stones. It's got names and a lot of things like that. You got anything on that? So we are on the National Historic Register, and that's primarily for stonework. Um, the stonework in the park was built by the Works Progress Administration in the 30s, and um, all of the retaining walls, the roads, the columns that you see, um, and the steeplechase was actually the, um, I think it's the only horse racing track built by the federal government that was also built by the WPA. So we have a lot of historic features. And then we do have um, nine historic cemeteries in the park that we, um, we have information and are continually doing research on those. So a lot of historic features. Also the Hodge House, which is, has been restored and won a historic commission restoration award. Um, I think in 2007, and it uh, is estimated to have been built in 1811. So one of the oldest um, still standing structures in the county. Um, reading a question about people, are people, can people purchase a tree to be planted in someone's memory and marked to the significance? So, um, we're, we don't have a Warner specific tree memorial tree program anymore. Those um, trees are planted through the Metro Parks Department. So you would contact um, Metro Parks and then there's an application and a donation process. And you can request that the tree is planted in Warner Park. Um, and they usually just hang a little grass tag on it. And Vera, there was a question right before that. Which of the two parks, Edwin and Percy, is larger or are they about the same? Percy Warner is much larger and I don't have the exact acreages off the top of my brain, um, but I think Percy Warner is over, I think it's over 1600 acres, 1200 acres. And then Edwin is smaller, but we did um, about 10 years ago acquire another 500 acres that was purchased by Friends of Warner Parks and donated to the city. And that's the Birch Reserve and the Hill Forest. And the Birch Reserve is um, directly across from the Nature Center on Highway 100. It is the only part of the park where there is um, no running and no dogs allowed. Um, and it's a nice primitive trail, about a three mile walk. Um, if you haven't been over there, I, I highly recommend it if you enjoy hiking. Can you say the name of that trail again? It's the, the Birch Reserve. The so Primitive B Trail. B-U-R-C-H, the Birch Reserve. And I think the trail is called the Birch Woods Trail. Thank you. Hey Vera, it's Jennifer with General Services. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about the some of the wild, like interesting wildlife that can be found in the Warner Parks. And then also, um, I guess some of the vegetation of note, like I'm thinking pawpaw trees, I know are a thing, um, which are really fun. And then just, yeah, some more about the wildlife. So just anything around those two things, I'd be interested. So that's a whole nother program, <laughs> but, um, uh, interesting wildlife. I mean, we have a lot of biodiversity in the Warner Parks. Over 185 species of birds um, each year can be found here. Um, a lot of mammals. I mean, people are always interested in mammals, but um, lots of deer, of course. Uh, we're seeing armadillo now, bobcats. We also have um, interesting wildlife. I'm trying to, I'm blanking out because you asked me that question. Uh, of course, lots of trees. We have over a hundred species of trees, so really diverse plant life. And this time of year, um, persimmons are ripe and edible and delicious. And so if you've never eaten a persimmon, um, if you come to the nature center, we can tell you where to find one close by. That's a fun um, 
fall plant to learn about. Um, barred owls were kind of known for beech trees and barred owls. So the big cavities in the beech trees are nesting sites for barred owls. And this time of year, right at sunset, if you're walking, you often hear them calling. Um, but just lots of wildlife out here. The last couple of years we have um, seen a bald eagle. It was kind of a, a new record for the park. So actually saw a bald eagle land in an open area and, and eat uh, off of a dead, I think it was a dead deer that was a roadkill deer. And then we had one soaring over um, the nature center this summer. So always something new to see and learn here. Um, Vera, this, this is Mary Rose from the library again. I wanted to ask a little bit, so you mentioned it in the video, um, I, I think. Can you talk a little bit more about that part, um, programs? About, uh, you broke up there. Can you repeat your question? Uh, my, my, um, my connection may not be so great, so I'll put it in, okay, yeah. in the chat as well. Um, um, program? Mary Rose, I don't think we can hear you. Yeah, go ahead and put it in the chat if you don't mind. And we can, we can answer that. Um, in the meantime, we probably have time for two or three more questions if anybody else has some questions. Oh, look, Mary Rose already did it. Can you talk about the golf cart program to tour the new LA, the steps? Yeah, so the, um, the golf cart tours are being offered. You, you do need to pre-register and they're being offered for people who can't walk up to the top of the steps or have trouble walking. Um, and they're free of charge, you register. Um, I think there's information on our website and probably on the Friends of Warner, Warner Parks website also. And it's a partnership between Metro Parks and um, Friends that we're offering those. Right now we're just offering them through Thanksgiving week. And then um, depending on the weather, we may extend that. But as it gets colder, people don't tend to wanna to go on a golf cart tour. Um, so we may, you know, start it up in the spring again. But uh, there, I think there's also, if you go on your own to the Percy Warner golf course, which is closest to the, the LA, um, you can go into the clubhouse and request a cart. Um, they have a cart available also. Okay, time for one quick question. Vera, this is Michelle from General Services. Um, I'm wondering if you know anything about Edwin and Percy Warner and why the parks were named after them? I do, that's a whole nother program also, <laughs> just teasing. Uh, so the Edwin and Percy Warner were brothers and they were both uh, chairman of the Metro Parks board at different times. Um, so when, when Warner Park was established, Luke Lee gave the land at the end of Bellmead Boulevard, it became Percy Warner Park. Luke Lee was Percy Warner's son-in-law. And Percy Warner at that time was chairman of the park board. And shortly after the park land was donated, Percy Warner passed away unexpectedly. And his brother Edwin became chairman of the park board. And so they um, decided uh, to name the park after Percy Warner after he had passed away. And um, that's how Percy Warner Park was named. And then Edwin Warner Park, and they're divided by Old Hickory Boulevard. So if you look at a map, Old Hickory, Old Hickory divides the two parks. Um, we manage them as one contiguous park though. So Edwin Warner is um, south of Old Hickory Boulevard and it's named for Edwin Warner because he raised the money, donated some money for the land to be acquired to become part of the park. That's a short answer. <laughs> All right, Jennifer, I'm gonna turn it back over to you. I think it's time for our quiz. 
It is. Thank you so much. Thanks for all the great questions, everybody. And thanks, Vera. So now we're going to have a fun, short quiz to test everybody's knowledge. Make sure you're paying attention. Um, so what I'm going to put this in the chat, but what you'll do is open up a browser, either on your computer, like a new browser or on your phone, and you'll go to menti.com. And I'll give you a code in just a minute, but go ahead and go to menti.com. And that is how you will play this quiz. And you're going to get points for correct as well as fast answers to this quiz. So let's go over here. And okay, here's your code 76060621. So go ahead and go to menti.com, enter in the code, you'll put in like a nickname, um, you'll get a little avatar and you'll put in a nickname and then you'll be registered for the quiz. So we're going to have five questions. You are going to get points for correct answers and also fast speed gives you extra points. Um, I wrote a question in here about the size of Warner Parks and I, there's been a lot of numbers floating around, but my question is about this just to contextualize the size of the whole thing like Warner, Edwin, Birch Reserve, all the things put together. So I, I hope I got that right. Um, and then also one caveat on this piece is that the mu the background music on the quiz is really loud. So feel free to turn down the volume on whatever device you are viewing the quiz on. I will turn down my volume, so hopefully it'll help you, but feel free to also adjust your volume. Okay, so let's get started and see. <laughs>
congratulations, curry time. Great job. Uh, curry that time, was me, curry. actually. So I'll defer to whoever got second place this time. Oh, no, it was you. You're too fast. Oh, uh, yeah. Whoever got second place this time can get it. Oh, Yoshi's a speed demon. OK, Jen, I think you were, was Jen second place? Anyway, whoever won first and second place people, you can email me. Yoshi is, is going to let the second place person get it this time. But great job, everybody. Um, mostly correct answers really fast. Thanks for playing. That was fun. And Laurel, I'll hand it over to you to wrap us up today. Great. A huge thank you again to Vera, our host over at Warner Parks, and we're so appreciative of her time and all the great work they do over there. Thanks again to Jennifer for hosting all these Metro Connects. Jennifer Westerholm organized all these, did all the recordings of the tours, put this all together, and this is the end of our series for Metro Connect this year. So a huge kudos to Jennifer for all your very, very hard work. So thank you for doing that. And I love seeing many uh, new names as well as repeat uh, visitors to our Metro Connect tour. Uh, once again, we do have a survey and we do encourage you to please take that survey. The link is in the chat button. Um, and you can go ahead and do that now. If you have a second, it takes about two or three minutes and we definitely look at that information as we start to plan for next year and how we can improve in different locations you like to see as a Metro employee. Um, and we'll also send you an email with the link as well. But if you have a second, it'd be great if you can go ahead and do that today. And we will be posting a recording of the tours uh, towards the early next year. We'll be sending out a message to all of you all. So if there were some tours you weren't able to attend, you can actually see them uh, once they're posted on our website. So stay tuned to Socket. You can sign up for our eblast at socket.nashville.gov. And we look forward to seeing you hopefully next season on our next Metro Connect series. Thank you again to everybody and have a great afternoon. Bye. Bye-bye. everybody. Have a great day.